So today's email comes from Brad and his email reads, hello, Keith, I have a question. Whenever a loved one dies, I always hear people say, I bet he or she is up there looking down on us. Do you think it's true that deceased Christians can watch over us from heaven? Because in the Bible, God is the only one who is mentioned as being able to do this. So, so thank you for your email, Brad. And this is a good question, but it's a question that I don't think the scriptures provide much information for. But let's look at what we do find in the scriptures. So the question is, will deceased Christians be able to watch over us from heaven? Now, what I hope you don't mean is that, will they be able to watch over us as though they were some type of guardian angel? Because that wouldn't be biblical at all. This notion that everyone has their own personal guardian angel, okay? Be careful of that. But if what you do mean is that they are up in heaven observing us, then that's different. And that's what I will focus on in this video. Now, I would have to answer this question with a flat out, be, just being honest, I don't know for sure, okay? But there are verses in the Bible that attest to the fact that we as Christians do have an audience. So let's examine what the Bible does say regarding this. So the book of Hebrews is probably the best place to go regarding this topic. And one of the things I do know for sure is that the saints in heaven are seeing through new eyes, okay? If they do see, it's through perfected eyes that are able to see everything as it really is. They will see and understand and be able to assess all things in a perfectly spiritual way. Now, the next thing that we find in the book of Hebrews that gives away to the fact that we on earth actually have an audience in heaven is the cloud of witnesses that are mentioned in the 12th chapter of Hebrews. Now, Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so such great such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings to so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So you know what I think about when I read that? It's as if we as Christians still on earth are at the Olympics, okay? And we are running on the track. And it's as if the saints that have passed on and are in heaven are actually in the stands rooting for us, screaming out for us to press on and not to lose heart. That's the image I get when I read that verse. Our family in heaven is rooting for us. How glorious is that? It's amazing. Now, one thing I do want to warn you about is the sin of sentimentalism, right? I can't tell you how many times I've heard people, heard lost people say things like uh, their, their, their cousin who died in their sins, who was just absolutely wicked, is up in heaven looking down on them. They simply believe that whoever they loved is in heaven. Okay, We've all run into people like this, right? And that's just the, the, the misconception that the majority of lost people in this world have, that everyone is in heaven. OK, because really no one wants to believe that people go to hell because then they don't they may have to attribute that to their own self. So it's just easier for people to believe that everyone's in heaven and they're all looking down on us and, and watching over us. OK, we need to make sure that whoever we attribute this to, OK, this idea that they're up there looking down on us, that they actually prove the right okay, to be thought of in this way by the life they lived while on earth. OK, were they actually born again believers in the Lord? Because if they weren't, they are not looking down. Okay. Bottom line, our minds should not primarily be focused on those who have passed on. Okay, They finished their race. Okay, Everything else will sort itself out. What you need to be focused on and what your eyes need to be set on is your own finish line, getting to the end of this so that you don't fall out. So I hope this has helped you. What is our living hope? Here it comes. To obtain an inheritance. To obtain an an inheritance. What about this inheritance? It is imperishable, imperishable. It cannot die. It cannot disappear. It cannot be deleted. And undefiled, it cannot be limited. It cannot be scarred, marred. It cannot fade away, disappear, dissipate. And it is reserved in heaven for you. All right, that's why you were saved. That's why you were born again. That's why you were adopted into the family in order to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Not for anybody else, but for you. And you are, the next verse, verse 5, protected by the power of God. What power of God? The power of the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That's power for witness, but it's also power for protection. It is the Holy Spirit in us who protects us through the means. This is wonderful. The power of God through faith. How does the Holy Spirit keep you in Christ? How does the Holy Spirit protect you from failing, from falling, from abandoning, from denying Christ, from defecting? Through faith. 
In other words, it is the Holy Spirit who empowers your faith. Ephesians 2, by grace are you saved through faith. Even that faith is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You say, well, I knew somebody that had faith and their faith died. No. Anybody who had faith that died had a human faith. The faith that God gives is a faith that cannot die. You're kept by that faith empowered by the Holy Spirit. And he goes on to say, unto a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. The whole point of salvation is to get us blameless and holy before Him in eternity where we will receive an inheritance. That is the fact of our inheritance. It is imperishable, undefiled, will not fade away, reserved in heaven, and the Holy Spirit is the internal protector who sustains your faith all the way to the end. Who's the source of this inheritance? That's the fact of it, the source of it in verse 17. Heirs of God. God is the source. We are heirs of God. We inherit what God has decided we should have. God is the one who gives us the inheritance. God is the one who laid it up. First Peter's words, laid up for you. It's God who laid the treasure of our inheritance up in heaven for us. It's just an amazing thing. Blessed be the God and Father who has caused us to have this inheritance. In Colossians 3.24, and there are many wonderful verses that uh, speak to this issue, this is one of the ones that I think is so wonderful. It talks about, from the Lord, Colossians 3.24, you will receive the reward of the inheritance. From the Lord, you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It's going to come from the Lord. It's His to give and His alone to give. Now let me dig a little down into that. You say, what is it? What is it that the Lord has left for us? In the purest and truest and most comprehensive sense, it is perfection, holiness, blamelessness, absolute righteousness, completeness. It is the perfection of glorified humanity. But it is even more than that. A better way to understand it is this. The psalmist talks about the Lord being His portion. Jeremiah talks about the Lord being His portion. In Revelation 21.3, we read that when we enter into heaven in our final glory, God shows up and He says that, I will be their God and they will be My people and I will live among them, and I will wipe away their tears, etc., etc., etc. The inheritance, folks, is God Himself. That's the inheritance. What is waiting for us? God. God. He is the shining one from the throne in the new Jerusalem. His glory extends to the infinite ends of the new heaven and the new earth. And we step right into the full blaze of that glory and are not incinerated because we are holy and blameless. And all that God is and all that God has becomes ours. It's a stunning reality. We inherit God. We even share His glory in His heaven forever. 